I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're here to share the word of the Lord which the Lord God Almighty has put upon my heart in the name of Jesus. We are going to read from the book of Luke chapter 10 and verse 18 by the grace of God. If we read together, the Bible says, And he said unto them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here the Lord Jesus spoke to his disciples and told them that, Behold, I have seen Satan falling from heaven like a flash of lightning, but I've given you power and a dominion over all the powers of darkness, over all the forces of the enemy, over scorpions to, sco uh, to stoop upon them, to step upon them, and tread upon them, and nothing by any means of the enemy's power shall ever hurt you in Jesus' mighty name. So the Lord Jesus saw Satan fall from heaven. And I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, that Satan fell from heaven. He fell from the presence of God and he has wrath against God's children. He's making war against God's people and is your enemy and is looking for somebody to devour. That is his purpose. The Bible says in the book of John, Jesus, Christ, uh, Jesus himself said, in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 10, the Bible says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is, those are the threefold purposes of Satan upon the face of the earth. When he fell from the presence of God, he came to steal, he came to kill, he came to destroy God is creation, and his primary goal is to destroy the souls of men. It's to destroy the souls of men, to destroy, to steal the hope of God's children, to steal and to destroy the life of God's children. That is his purpose. He's on mission and is waging war from that time when he fell from the presence of God until today. But we who are in Christ, we have the victory in the name of Jesus. We have the victory, we have hope that we have power over all the powers of darkness because Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary and he has given us that hope, he has given us that power over all the powers of the enemy, over prosperities, over the forces of darkness, over every witchcraft, over every sorcery, over every demonic activity. But I want you to know, though we have got power, though we have got the dominion over all the forces of darkness, I want to tell you that we are living in a very terrible generation. In a very terrible generation where the man of lawlessness is working hard, where Satan is working so hard, and where sin is accumulated before the altar of God. So sin is separation from the presence of God. So the more men continue to sin, is the more we are separated from the presence of God, and is the more we give power to demon spirits to influence this world to come and um, work out their works of darkness into the land of the living. And I tell you, the earth is under an invasion of demonic spirits. We are under an invasion of demonic spirits. We are in the latter times. When you read through the book of Revelation chapter 9, you will see something in that chapter. Revelation chapter 9, when you read through, you will see that John saw when the angel of the Lord had... Um, uh, you will see that when he had blown the fifth trumpet, something magnificent happened upon the face of the earth. That there was a star that fell from heaven. There was a star that fell from heaven, and it was given the keys of the bottomless pit, 
and it opened the bottomless pit, and there out of the bottomless pit came out locusts, and a great darkness which spread all over the face of the earth, and the whole air in the sky was contaminated because of this smoke, the dark smoke that came out of the bottomless pit. And I want to tell you that that star that fell from heaven is Lucifer and his counterparts. Lucifer, uh, the Bible says his name is Apollyon, one of the great agents of devils, one of the great agents of demons, the, one of the chief fallen angels, that is Apollyon. Uh, he fell from the presence of God. They fell from the presence of God. All devils fell and they came upon the face of the earth and under the world where demon spirits were being bound and they were given power to open the bottomless pit to release these wicked spirits from the bottomless pit to release these demon spirits from the bottomless pit that they may come to begin operating wickedly upon the face of the earth i want to tell you that this was a prophetic word that was to be fulfilled in the latter time. And I want you to know that this scripture has already been fulfilled. The angel that fell from the presence of God has already been given power to free the demon spirits that were bound in the bottomless pit. So the demon spirits were already released and they are on earth. So the portal between the underworld and the earth is open. So now because of the accumulated sins of men, demon spirits have risen from the pit and they are on earth operating wickedly, continuing to influence men and women, religious men, politicians, wise men and foolish men upon the face of the earth. And we see there is a lot of evil going on into the face of of the earth and it's continually accumulating so that the wrath of God may accumulate upon the face of the earth in order to set in his judgment with, uh, in order to set in his judgment the judgments of the Lord are not far from now we are in the last times we are in the latter days my dear brother and my sister though we who are children of God have been given authority and power over all the powers of darkness we can lose that power if we walk under sin. If we accept Satan to rule over our lives, if we accept the dominion of sin to rule over our lives, then we can allow devils. Then we have opened the door for devils to freely operate in our lives and to influence us. And if we at look, even in the church of God, there is a lot of evil going on in the church of God, among churches, among men of God, among religious men. A lot of evil. One speaks against another. One fights against another. That is the activity of the devil. It's not by the will of men, but it's the activity of wicked spirits that are influencing the earth so that the church of God may be destroyed. The work of the devil is to steal kill and to destroy and uh, his purposes are getting fulfilled whenever many run away from the presence of God many men get deceived daily because they reject the love of God because they fall trap of different uh, temptations and the trials of the enemy so I'm here to encourage you my brother and my sister let us maintain the righteousness of God if we are to overcome the enemy, if we are to exercise the authority which Jesus gave unto the church, if we are to exercise that authority, we've got to maintain the righteousness of God upon us, maintain the garment of purity, maintain the garment of holiness and righteousness upon you daily. By that you can have power over the forces of darkness. But if you don't have the garment of righteousness and the garment of holiness upon you, Satan will transact over your life. He will continue to influence you in one way or the other. So, dear friends, 
Let us stand still. Let us search the face of God. Let us search the old path which the Lord showed us. The way of purity. The way of righteousness. The way of holiness. That is God's desire that we continue walking in holiness and righteousness. Forsaking all the works of demon spirits. Forsaking the way of wickedness. The forsaking the way of lies, of falseness, of wickedness, of immorality, of perversion. Forsaking all those ways of wickedness. Understanding in the way, in the purity of righteousness daily. To, uh, seeing that we maintain our union, our relationship with Jesus. That is God's will. That we may maintain our relationship with him daily searching his face, continue in fasting, continuing in prayer, continuing in reading the word, in fellowship of brethren, my dear brother. Let us turn and let us strengthen one another in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a healing thing, thing for the devil to influence us to speak, uh, to start speaking evil against each other. When you hear a man of God speaking evil against another man of God, maybe, yes, a man has fallen short of God's glory. Maybe a man has transgressed. We, as children of God, we are not supposed to judge one another. We are not supposed to speak against one another. Our, our investment should not be in accusation against one another. Should not be in pushing the agenda of Satan. Our investments, our efforts, our focus should not be in seeing the faults or in discovering the faults of one another. But our effort should be put in praying for one another, in bearing one another's burden. That is the Father's will. That is God's will that we may hold one another's hand. If you find me in the fall to correct me in love, correct me in love, correct me in harmony, correct me in humility, in humbleness, correct me with a right consciousness, a right mind. Help me to stand again, my brother and my sister. Do not pinpoint anybody that is walking or that has a phone that has backslidden, but instead lift them. In the, the, in the prayer before the altar of God, that God may strengthen them, that God may empower them. Do not join them that are speaking ill against one another. Do not join church conflicts, church conflicts, battles of pastors and prophets, one speaking against another, my brother and my sister. If you do, you are running the agenda of the enemy. The agenda of the enemy is to divide the body of Christ, to destroy souls, to bring discord, to sow discord among the body of Christ. But we are to preach unity, we are to preach peace, we are to preach reconciliation, we are to preach righteousness and holiness. By doing that, we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the peacemakers. Let us try our level best. Let us stand to resist the works of the enemy by lifting one another in the prayers. Let us lift our generation in the prayers. Let us lift the men of God that are being influenced by the devil to do certain works, to teach false doctrines. Let us lift them up in the prayers before the altar of God that God may correct them. Do not be like them that choose one another, that choose other brethren, that choose men of God, that choose women of God. Do not choose anybody. Don't let your mouth be deceived by stuttering against any servant of God. Don't bring a railing accusation against yourself, my brother and my sister. That is the work of the devil to destroy, to kill and to dismantle the body of Christ by setting again uh, by setting ourselves against each other so my brother my sister let us stand and uphold one another in the prayer if you see a man falling if you see a brother falling if you see a sister falling instead of you are choosing them on the pulpit instead of you speaking against them stand and uplift them in a prayer and the God can restore such a person. 
God can restore such a brother and a sister. The Bible says, if you rescue one soul, it's a great, great blessing, my brother, before the altar of God, and you will have done a great thing before the altar of God. The Bible says, if one sinner returns into repentance and he returns unto the faith, there is great joy in the presence of God. So let our investment be that, to see that many souls are saved, to pray for the lost souls, to pray for that spirit of unity, the spirit of repentance, to remain in the body of Christ, that whenever we see a person is transgressing, let us pray for them that God may lift them up, that God may strengthen them up. And if we can reach to them directly, let us secretly search out to them and reach out to them. But social media will not edify us if we are to speak our errors on social media. It will not edify the body. It will continue to sow seeds of discord and it will block God's people from coming to Christ, those that are still lost into the world. So I, I applaud you, Church of God. I applaud you, children of the living God. Let us search out the path of righteousness. Let us not allow the devil to sow seeds of discord. Let us remain dressed up in the garment of righteousness and holiness that we may defeat the wiles of the devil which has upheld so strongly. He has opened the portals between the world and the underworld so that demon spirits are released that they may come to begin operating freely upon the face of the earth. But this is the hope that we have victory over all the powers of darkness if we stand in righteousness, if we stand in holiness, if we uphold the word of God, the word of truth with all integrity, and if we continue bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. May the good Lord Jesus bless you incredibly and abundantly. Let us walk in the way of purity, the way of righteousness, holding our faith steadfastly, that we may be able to practice and um, have dominion over all the powers of darkness and to have the victory over all the wiles of the devil in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Amen. Amen.